Hello friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Amplifier. So today in this particular video, I am going to discuss one real life application of dynamic data masking feature of Snowflake. Okay, and that is this particular feature is widely used in data anonymization. Okay, that is securing the personally identifiable information of a particular user. We can use this particular technique. Okay. So let me discuss how basically it works, okay? So many times we might be creating one particular website where there is sign up and login functionality. Then how it works basically, one time as a first time activity, the user will try to sign up. They will be giving the user ID and password. It will be getting stored in the backend database. Next time when they will try to log in, whatever user ID and password the user will be entering, the system will basically try to validate whether it is matching with the stored user ID password in the database, backend database or not. If they are matching, then system will understand, okay, the user is genuine user and the system will allow the user to enter in the website and use the services. Else, it will be showing incorrect user ID and password, something like that. Okay. Now, the password part is not directly stored in any database. Okay. And there one concept comes. And how that password is stored in a database in a secure manner, let me discuss, especially in terms of authentication, okay? That is, when just for authentication purpose, we are storing some password, then how basically it is stored, okay? Like for example, first time user being signed up, then they are giving user ID password, that is getting stored in the database. Next time when they are trying to log in, then just the system will validate whether entered user ID and password is matching with the stored database user ID password or not. In this kind of case, when this kind of authentication is happening, there how password is stored in the system, let me discuss, okay? So suppose here is the user, he or she is entering the password 123546. Now directly this particular stuff will not be stored in the database, okay? What will happen that first, Cryptographic hash algorithm will be applied on this and there are different algorithms SHA2, SHA1, SHA256 different algorithms are there SHA is nothing but secured hash algorithm okay and the hash algorithm is such kind of algorithm that you can get this particular value from the actual password okay but if you know this particular value which is basically output of the hashing algorithm AAFA408 you can never get back this actual password okay that is your actual password can never be misused in any way okay because there is no way to go in the original password from the output of the cryptographic algorithm okay now what the system do they basically store this particular cryptographic hash output in the database okay so now in the database aafa408 is stored now when the user will try to log in they will be basically entering same password then the system will be applying the same hash algorithm on this password. It will be generating, okay, AAFA408 and it will be validating whether the hash value is matching with what is stored in the database or not. If they are matching, that means the user is genuine, the uh, authentication is done and it will allow the user, okay. That way, in the whole picture, the system who has basically built the website, who has built the front end, back end, they are never knowing the actual password of the user, okay? Because they are not even storing that, they are not even using that, okay? All they are doing, when user is entering the password, they are basically applying hash algorithm and they are generating such value from which to understand actual password is impossible, okay? that That's how advanced the hash algorithm is. And that one they are using for validation purpose, right? So this is how the password is stored in database, okay? So when you uh, sign up any web in a website, you might be thinking that your password or user ID, if some employee of that organization know, they might be misusing, but no actual scenario is not like that. They cannot misuse, okay? Because the architecture looks like this. One, two, three, four, five, six is not at all known by any employee. They max to max can know AAFA408. And this one, if they try to enter, then here AAFA408 will come as actual password, then on top of that hash algorithm will be applied, it will be generating some other value and that other value will not be matching with the database password and it will be basically not allowing the user to enter, right? So this is kind of, you are completely secure, right? Now, how you can implement this kind of technique in Snowflake using dynamic data masking, let me discuss. 
So first what I am doing, I am using the role sysadmin and then here what I am doing, I am dropping a database if exist Ramu. So if I refresh this particular page here, see no Ramu database is there. Then here I am creating the database as a fresh environment and I am using that. Okay. Then here I am creating a dummy table, employee info, which is having employee ID, employee name, password and department. Okay. Let's execute that. And suppose here I am inserting some values. Okay. So for the time being, suppose the employee name and the password I am entering. Okay. Which I will make secure soon. So once I inserted that here, if I execute select star from this table, we will be seeing actual employee name or user ID and the password. Okay. Now this kind of thing is not at all safe. So what we do, we basically apply dynamic data masking. So first we will use account admin role and then here we will be creating a masking policy. If the role is account admin, then only show the actual value. Else you apply secured hashing algorithm to on the value and show that. Okay. Let's apply on that. And then here I will apply this particular masking policy on the password column on the employee info table. Okay. Once I executed that. Now, if I execute this particular code, select star, currently I am in account admin, so I am able to see this because as part of the policy, if the current role is account admin, then we are able to see the actual values. But suppose I am changing the role to sysadmin and then I am executing select star from this particular table. Here, see, we are seeing the hash value of the password. And from this password, to get back the original password is impossible. That's how advanced the hashing algorithm is. Okay. But still, this particular stuff can be used for authentication. What will happen? Suppose the employee name is Soham and, and, and in the company portal, suppose Soham is entering his actual user ID and actual password. What it will do? The system will come into this particular table and for the username Soham, it will try to check whether the hash value of the password what Soham entered is matching with this particular stored hash value or not. That's how this particular login architecture is working, right? You can think as a first time activity, we did this particular part. And now next time when Soham is trying to enter, we will not check whether this password and database stored password is matching or not. What we will do, we will try to match whether the hash value after applying the hashing algorithm on this particular password is matching with the database password or not. Okay. So that query looks like this. So let's start from this particular table where employee name is Soham and employee password. Soham will only enter Soham123, which is the actual password of Soham. Okay. See, Soham123 Soham is the password. He is entering only that particular actual password, but while making authentication against the backend database, we'll be first applying secured hashing algorithm and then we'll be trying to validate. So if I run, Yes, it will be validating. See, perfectly we are getting. Why we are getting? Because hash algorithm is such that if you are passing same input, then always you are going to get same output, same hash value as output. But for different input, the hash value output from the algorithm will be different actually, obviously, right? And this is completely irreversible process. Suppose one employee in your organization has access to this particular table, then also they will not able to understand the actual password of Soham because this is kind of encrypted value, right? Soham no need to worry about that. He will be entering actual password only. But the system for validation purpose, first they will be applying secured hashing algorithm, then they will try to cross validate, right? So I hope you understood this and in the whole part of this kind of personal identification information securing, which is also termed as data anonymization. Here main central work is done by this particular dynamic data masking, right? So this is one real life use case of dynamic data masking. And all these course I'll be providing in the description box or in the comment section. If you want, you can have a try. This is all for my this video. Thank you for watching.